Hi there, and welcome to this month's Stumbox tutorial. I'm Kina, and today we're going to be doing a chromatography experiment in which we separate the dye in Kool-Aid from the flavor in Kool-Aid. It's a really fun, hands-on experiment. So let's get started. So for this month's experiment, your Stumbox will provide most of everything that you need. I'll just go through, because some of these are kind of not everyday things that you see, so the names might be unfamiliar. But we have our protocol as usual, safety goggles, we have our nitrile gloves if you're allergic to latex, it's not a problem. And some other pieces of this experiment you might not be familiar with since you don't see them every day are the conical tubes. We've done these before with our DNA experiment, but they were 15 milliliter tubes. These are 50, and we have three of these. We also provide a 10 milliliter syringe, we provide a six well petri dish, and we use this in the lab to culture different types of cells or separate mixtures, most commonly. And the most important piece of our box this month is our filter. You can reuse this, and I'll show you at the end of our experiment how to clean it. The only two things we need you at home to have are water and 70% isopropanol, which you can usually find at your drugstore or at the grocery store. And a quick note about isopropanol, it is very flammable, so keep it away from any open flames, don't put it near anything that might spark it, and always have a parent nearby to help you work with this. And we will also provide the Kool-Aid for you today. Okay, now that we have everything out, we're ready to get started, so let's get going. Before we can start our chromatography experiment, we have to get some preparation done. And the first steps in the preparation protocol are preparing our Kool-Aid. So you can prepare this Kool-Aid just as the package says you should, but do not put sugar in it. The sugar will mess up our chromatography experiment, so no sugar in this. You don't have to make the whole packet, since it makes about a couple quarts, since we only really need 10 milliliters to do this experiment. So I've gone ahead and put some in my tube. You guys can just make yours in a cup at home. We're also going to prepare our isopropanol dilutions. And so we have dilutions of 25%, 5% and 70%, which is our stock solution we got from the store. And to do this, we're going to do it this way. And you might wanna have cups around to hold all these things because doing this one-handed is a little difficult. So I'm just gonna take some of my 70% solution, pour about 45 milliliters into our first conical tube. And then once we're done with that, making sure you always cap anything that's flammable whenever you're not using it safely and securely and putting it away to the side until we need it again. For the 25%, we need about 18 milliliters of isopropanol. So that's a little between the 20 and the 15 line. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up to that. Between the 15 and the 20, there's one line. So about there. There you go. And then, we're going to use water to fill to volume. So that would just be to about the 45 line or higher. We'll cap it, make sure it's secured. That's our 25%. And for the 5%, we're going to add in four mils. There's a line for the 10, and then two lines below that would be the line for the five. So just a little bit below that line will be four milliliters of isopropanol. just like that. And then we'll pour water up to volume. And we will carefully cap this. And after you've firmly secured your 25 and your 5%, invert a few times to make sure it totally mixes. And that's our prep work, and we're ready. The first thing we wanna do for this experiment is to make sure that we are charging our filter, which means that we're just getting it ready to accept our first solution. So you always wanna make sure that the long end of the filter is connected to the syringe. You'll never pull anything up through the filter. If you're pulling stuff up into the syringe, always remove the filter. So the first thing we're gonna pull up is our 70% solution. We're gonna take about 10 milliliters of this into the syringe without the filter on it. So to do that, just uncap it put it back in your glass, it should be fine. We're gonna pull up the 10 milliliters, slowly and carefully. Close this. And then add your filter to your syringe, long end way, goes on top. And we're going to put about 10 milliliters into this first well. We're gonna go to well number one, 
And we're gonna slowly expel all 10 milliliters of this into the well by putting pressure on the back of the syringe. So we'll just dab that so it's nice and clean. And we'll remove it from the syringe because we will never ever take anything up through the bottom of the filter. Now it's time to suck up 10 mils of the Kool-Aid. So make sure it's properly mixed. Again, no sugar in this. Uncap it, put it to the side so it can stand up on its own and draw five to 10 milliliters of this and you can read those on the side. And that's about five. Put that down and use two hands always. Okay, and now we're gonna connect our syringe to our filter. So the long end of the filter to the syringe and slowly push through. You might get a little bit of residual dye into the well, but most of what's coming through is just the flavoring. But we also wanna point out that mostly this is a very clear solution. So if you waft it towards yourself, like it smells like the Kool-Aid. So that's the flavoring what came out. A little bit of residual dye came out with it, but that's okay. Now we're going to unhook our syringe. If you notice now, the filter is completely purple. There's some dye coming through the bottom, but it's mostly purple, crazy. So that's all of the dye from Kool-Aid stuck in that filter. And put it in a well to rest. And we're going to load about 10 mils of our 5% isopropanol solution. So again, uncap this, and we're gonna take up 10 milliliters of 5% isopropanol. Okay. Put that down. Again, connecting the long end of our filter to our syringe. Into well number three this time, we're gonna pour all of whatever's in the syringe through the filter into the well. And you can see that the color coming out now is red. So that's the red dye in Kool-Aid being separated from the blue dye remaining because what two colors make purple? Red and blue. Okay, so you can tell that there's still a little bit of red left in our filter as well as some blue. So to get rid of the excess red to make sure that we get a really clear blue color, we're gonna do one more wash with the 5% isopropanol. So we're gonna do that part one more time. Another 10 milliliters. And attach the long end of the filter and using well number four this time, just expel whatever's left of the red. And you'll notice that the color coming out this time is a little fainter red just because we're diluting it more into some more solution. Remove the filter. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move up in a concentration of alcohol. So we're gonna take our 25% solution that we made earlier and use 10 mils of this to get the rest of the dye out of the filter. So 10 mils of 25%. Long end of the filter goes on the syringe and carefully expel. And you'll notice what color comes out now is blue. So we're getting rid of the blue that's remaining in the filter by using the higher percentage isopropanol. There's a little bit left in the filter, you can see here. So if we want to get rid of that, again, we'll do just one last wash with the 25%. Okay. And just to get this last bit of blue out, we're gonna do a little bit more. And you'll notice now that my filter is almost entirely clear of color. It's just white again. And what's in our last well, our sixth well, is almost clear, but mostly blue. We now have the separation of dye molecules from the Kool-Aid and our flavoring. So the first thing that came out was our flavor, which is clear for the most part without the residual dye that came through. And then the first color that we see come out is the red. As we pull out more of the red, we'll see that it becomes less concentrated, which is a fainter color. And then the next molecule we'll pull out with the 25% alcohol is the blue dye, which again gets fainter as you put more of it in to solution. And this is our chromatography experiment. To clean this filter though, if you wanna use this again, you can take up the 70% alcohol. You can either use the clean one or you can use whatever you discharged in your first well when you charged the filter and attach it to the long end, not the short end, and just push it through the filter one more time to clean it. Recycling 70% isopropanol and it should be good. 
And to throw all this stuff away, go ahead and pour it down the sink. Isopropanol is safe to pour away, and so is the Kool-Aid since we obviously drink it all the time. And that is how you clean up this experiment. So we want to see what you guys at home can do with this experiment. If you have other things at home that you'd like to try separating, I would highly recommend watching our follow-up video on why this experiment works to understand how to go do this experiment again. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been our chromatography tutorial, and I can't wait to see you guys next month when we do our shark experiment. So stay tuned, and we'll see you all next month. Bye. Chromatography is the study of separating chemical mixtures by their individual components. So if you think about things in your life that you use every day, 